Simple harmonic motion applies to any oscillation that we consider to be a free oscillation. That is one where the amplitude is constant, so it always swings back to the same displacement from its starting point, or from its equilibrium position rather, and there are no external forces present to act on the system. So for example, this pendulum as it swings here, swings backwards and forwards and always returns to the same maximum displacement. And there's nothing else driving that, it's just uh, going in a back and forth motion under its own initial starting conditions. From waves, because we can analyze uh, simple harmonic motion in a wave uh, nature, we need to remember that time period is the time for one complete cycle of oscillations. So for our oscillating pendulum here, the time to go from the top there, or maximum displacement, back and back to its starting position would be our time period. And of course the frequency is just the number of oscillations per second or one over t. Now when we look at this video, there's a couple of extra points we need to bring in. The point to which the system would come to rest if you were to leave it is the equilibrium position. And the point of maximum displacement is our amplitude. Now we usually say displacement is x, and we could have a range of different displacements depending on the time at which we are measuring it, but the maximum displacement is always the amplitude. So one of the things that you need to be familiar with is the displacement time graph for an oscillating system undergoing SHM or simple harmonic motion. And if we have a look at this video here, we have a trolley with two springs. It's initially been displaced. So it is a distance A or amplitude away from the equilibrium position. And you can see that as it moves backwards and forwards, the horizontal displacement from the equilibrium is constantly changing. And as it plots, it draws out this rather lovely cos curve. Why is it a cos curve? Well, we're starting at maximum displacement. So we end up getting our cos curve with one full cycle being our time period t. And from that, of course, we could work out the frequency from 1 over t. The last thing that we need to look at in this introduction is just to recap phase difference. Now. Any object that's oscillating will perform one full cycle in two pi radians. Hopefully you've uh, looked at circular motion where we discussed what we meant by a radian and where this one full cycle in two pi comes from. But Jill, for example, here is at maximum height. In two pi radians, she'll go all the way back to her maximum height on this side and then swing back to where she began. Now, if they are t seconds apart, so if Jack started t seconds after Jill from the same initial displacement point, they're going to have a phase difference. They'll be out of phase with each other. And that phase difference is our 2 pi, one complete oscillation, times the time into their oscillations that we're looking at, divided by the total time taken for one oscillation. So, for example, if the time period for one oscillation here was 2.4 seconds, Jack reaches his maximum displacement, so Jack gets to this point here that Jill is at in the picture, 0.6 seconds after Jill. What's their phase difference? Well, we know that t is equal to 2.4 seconds. We know that the delta t, or the difference in time between them reaching the same point, is 0.6 seconds. Using the equation above, we can work out that their phase difference is equal to 2 pi times that change in time between them reaching the same point divided by the time period. Since delta t is 0 0.6 and t is 2.4, that then becomes 1.2 pi over 2.4 and 1.2 divided by 2.4 is just a half. So that we would have a phase difference of a half pi or pi by two radians.